be called by Dr. Louise Irving, who is from the Save and Mission Hospital. Often 
this is so called Cinderella services, like Mandela services, that get closed up, and people are not going to protest about that. There are also social care budget cuts, and there's a very close link between social care and health care because, um, well, as you can imagine, there's a great overlap between the two. Because of 20% social care cuts, um, councils are not being able to provide the same level of support to elderly and disabled people that they should be able to, which actually impacts on their, their health care. Um, it can lead to older people, especially being kept in hospital far longer than they need to be. Um, Two billion pounds have been taken out of the NHS um, and given back to the Treasury. These cuts were supposed to be um, efficiency savings, to be plowed back into the NHS, but actually the money has been removed. Also, another two billion has been taken out of the NHS to, to, to shore up social care. So, the, it is being completely undermined financially. There's also privatisation. The Health and Social Care Act, which the government got in, um, there's a white paper within six weeks of being elected, um, having said they weren't going to do anything, was, as I say, a blueprint that, that they had for several years. That, is, that means that all NHS services, once they come up for renewal, have to be put out to tender. The private sector is already winning huge contracts, contracts of hundreds of millions of pounds. And one of the biggest ones is over in Cambridgeshire, which is, um, I think, about a billion pounds to provide a whole range of community services. Virgin Healthcare won a contract with 600 million down in, in, in South Africa to provide community care, children's palliative care, run community hospitals. Um, in other areas, Virgin has won contracts with sexual health clinics. Not only does this privatisation mean that money is being siphoned off from the NHS into private pockets, which shouldn't be used for, to fund NHS services. It also means a huge amount of money is being spent, as I said earlier, on transaction costs, which have gone up from about 5% of the NHS budget, which was originally spent on administration, to approaching 20% of the budget is the current estimate. Because you've got to do all this contracting and billing, and, and um, there's lots of um, legal issues with um, lawyers, competition lawyers, challenging decisions already billions of pounds have been spent on competition lawyers. Um, the other thing about privatisation is the way it fragments care. It breaks it all up. So you've got a situation where sexual health is now being supposedly run by local authorities and many of them are putting things out to tender. But HIV care, which is much more expensive, difficult to make a profit from because it's much more unpredictable in the course of the illness of the treatment, that's been kept within the NHS. So the NHS has been kept left with the costly um, services, but it's not getting any of the kind of routine care that used to cross, cross um, subsidise, and that undermines the, 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 the economy and the resources of the NHS and, and leads to further breakdown. Uh, finally, in PFI, this government, the Pilot Finance Initiative, which has, um, is used to finance hospitals, healthcare facilities, um, at extortionate rates, which are unaffordable <coughs> and are leading to bankruptcy of hospitals across the country. This was, well, the very first PFIs were introduced under the Tories, but the, the Labour government introduced a lot of PFIs for hospitals, and this current government is signing even more PFI deals. So we have to deal with that issue, because that's also undermining our NHS. And there's, there's the ideological attack and the principles of the NHS, as I said, the principle of social solidarity, leading to an eventual two-tier system. One of the ways this is happening is to say that hospitals are unsustainable, that they're going to have to close a third of hospitals in London and dozens of hospitals around the country, using the idea that hospitals are individual, independent um, businesses, which is anathema to the concept of the unified NHS. But these businesses can be allowed to fail. But the one business that can't be allowed to fail is a PFI hospital, because PFI debts have to be, you can never close a PFI hospital debts still have to be paid even if the hospital is raised to the ground. And that's what, they, that's what happened here in, in South East London. The South London Healthcare Trust had two hospital PFI hospitals, Queen Elizabeth and the Princess Royal. They cost about just over 200 million to build. We, we've already paid it back about five, six hundred million. Still owe over a thousand, over a billion pounds to pay those. They were spending about a million pounds a week trying to pay that debt. And this was deemed unsustainable, and the government brought in the trust special administrator to rapidly, to look at ways of rapidly dealing with that situation. 
He then moved to the neighbouring Lewisham Hospital, which is not, was not a um, PFI hospital, was a, was a sustainable, was a solvent, and was a popular and successful hospital, and proposed closing that hospital. We organised a huge campaign in Lewisham. It was a massive campaign, culminating in a demonstration of 25,000 people, because what pe people will fight and people will defend their services when they see them directly under threat like that. Um, we also took the government to court, um, and we won, we won the High Court victory in July, and we won the government appealed, and we won the appeal in October. And that is a real victory. There are some victories in this struggle, and we have to acknowledge them when they happen, because it has been so hard. It's been so hard to alert people to the threats to their NHS. People still feel a little secure, but just don't believe that this is going to happen to their NHS. And so we do, we, we have been struggling you know, against the Social Care Act and all that. This has been first time we've been able to mobilise so many people to defend the market health service locally. But it's a short term victory. Not only do we know that the government's going to come back and try again, partly because they're trying to change the law so that they can use the special administrator regime to have wider, more sweeping powers to rapidly close any hospital that they want without proper consultation, without the support of local people or local clinicians. And that is a great threat for this clause 118 to the, to the care bill going through Parliament now. But in a wider sense, we know that the attacks on the whole NHS are also attacks on the Lewisham NHS as well. And similarly, what happens in Lewisham is a microcosm of what has happened across the country. We know it's the same struggle. And our campaign recognises this. And although we won our short-term victory, we are continuing as a campaign to fight to defend not only local NHS services, but to try to link up with other campaigns around the country in the broader fight to save our NHS. We know that there are campaigns around them, all over the place, and we're hoping that we can link up with them, inspire each other, support each other, learn lessons from each other. The lesson of Lewisham is that you can organise, you can fight, and sometimes you can win. <coughs> and that's the